Alright, coming to you live from REW Hobbies and Games, this is Monty Kev. And I am Shrimbo. So Kevin and Ivan, uh, here to bring you Armored Alliance. So we have found Armored Alliance uh, in Michigan, one of the first states in, in the country to find it. We wanted to uh, bring our thoughts and feelings about it. So we're going to talk about two main points with you guys, and then we're going to take you through some gameplay with the new stuff. So first and foremost, talk about the figures. So I'm going to be talking about uh, Dragonoid Ultra, Hydorus Ultra, and Trox Ultra. And then I'm going to be going over Nilius Ultra, Halcor Ultra, and Pegatrix Ultra. Our plan today is really just talk about how we feel about the, the figures themselves, the new Baku gear, and then uh, we'll talk about how we feel about competitively. Uh, so both of us play in a monthly tournament. Uh, probably uh, pretty decent uh, results. Usually uh, Ivan's taken first and I'm not ever taking first. You're uh, close. But close. we're, uh, we're going to talk about the competitive aspects of the gear and what new features the new figures bring to the game. And uh, then we'll go through a gameplay, see how it all works out. Alright, first and foremost picture, uh, go ahead and grab the box. Let's talk about uh, just the new pretty uh, packaging. So they switched from the black and red uh, design to the gray design, which I thought was uh, was pretty cool. Faction symbols everywhere on the packaging. Yeah, you've got faction symbols all around inside of here. You've got the faction symbol right behind the Baku gun. You got the faction symbol on the Baku gun. Uh, yeah, they're going crazy with showing you how big the new faction symbols are. Uh, like you were saying, I do like that the they're going for more like gray, like a I thought armor. It, I thought like it stood silver. out uh, when I was doing my uh, figure hunting in the in the aisle. I thought it kind of stood out a little bit better. I, I really like the design. So A plus from us on the actual packaging design. Um, and then over here on the back, we got a much nicer image, one that looks at least more accurate to what's actually in the box than uh, Battle Planet. Uh, it shows you exactly what's in the box as well, which is super neat. I uh, got all your, you know, what you can buy, file the app, blah, blah, blah. Um, it obviously states right here what the actual uh, product is, which, like, I, I thought that was really cool. If you look at an image, you can see that it says on it, Bakugan, and then Bakugan Ultra, and Baku Gear. And yeah. then they're also all color-coded. So this one has a yellow packaging on it, while singles cores have red, and single ultras have blue. I think it's also very interesting. And the big part of the big change that you guys will all notice, and one of my favorite changes, is... The, the core! The Baku cores have now taken a new design change and they look much more like the um, Japanese Bakugan release for Battle Planet. So they have new top facing uh, design, which is I think much more colorful and, and eye catching. And but the most important one is on the back, which is absolutely beautiful and follows the Japanese design um, to a T, pretty much. Yeah, super cool. So we got obviously the new Red Fist and new Orange Shield. We got a new Green Fist, and all of the new cores look. Absolutely amazing, and I hope they reprint core packaging, and I would buy it just for to replace all my old cores. Absolutely. Um, I mean, so again, big design plus, uh, big thumbs up from the packaging design, from the new core design. Uh, we'll get into the core stats in our competitive discussion. Yeah. The next part is really we want to just go through each Bakugan, so I'm going to go ahead and take three and we're going to talk about just the design of it and its gear and talk about uh, how we feel about it from a collector's aspect, from a toy aspect, and then we'll get into competitive after. So, introduce you first to Mr. Dragonoid Ultra. He looks very similar to Dragonoid Ultra or uh, Hyper Dragonoid. few design changes we notice is the wings are separ they separate and they're obviously the faction symbol is very important now. Um, but other than that, it's pretty close to the old design that we're used to. And then, um, of course, your new Baku gear. So he's got the big cannon on top, and then he has his attachable uh, lasers 
into the wings. And now, for me, I'm a vintage plastic collector. I collect Star Wars, I collect Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Exo Squad. From a toy aspect, something sitting on my shelf, or from my kid, my five-year-old son loves this, right? So he loves that it comes with big guns. Um, I think it's really cool uh, from a gameplay standpoint. It doesn't do much, we'll talk about it in a little bit. But just from um, a collector setup, I mean, again, it's all, again, the magnetic spring loaded. So I think it was really cool. And who does not want their Dragonoid just to be hauling, toting around a gigantic laser? I mean, so I, it's, it's impressive, an impressive sight to see. Yeah, so uh, I really oh, like the Dragonoid. Again, uh, so we'll give that one a thumbs up too. I really like the Dragonoid. I'm a big fan of the gigantic lasers, so. No, I, Dragonoid is super good too, especially with his uh, big manual arms now. Uh, I'm going to go over next is Pegatrix Ultra. So Pegatrix Ultra is... I would say an improvement from the other Ultra. I would definitely say it looks much more like a Pegasus. Um, it's in like a, a much less like rearing up form and just kind of running or kind of standing. So a little less action, but uh, a much better sight to see and much visibly a Pegasus. Uh, a lot of manual parts on this Pegatrix as well, like a lot. Are you lot. a fan of the manual, manual parts? Well, I if, you, if you would have said that with the old <laughs> Pegatrix Ultra, I would have said yes. With this one, absolutely not. I think it's a nightmare <laughs> because you have to unfold each and every hoop. Yeah, or else see, it I, looks super chonky. From a collector standpoint, I I don't mind manual parts because I'm probably going to stage it one time, put it on my shelf, and yeah. just let it look really awesome. But from you know from a gameplay standpoint, when they when they open and they don't look like the figure with a lot of, a lot of manual help, I I kind of I prefer not a lot of manual parts. Um, I I agree with you. For, but I can understand why because it, when you do open it all up or like Trox arms, you know when you open Trox arms. It, they look pretty cool on the shelf, but oh yeah. But in during the competitive scene, when they open and they don't all, it's not all there. It, it's not as impressive. It's not as cool as when somebody who completely opens up. Um, honestly, all I can say really about Pegatrix is she's incredibly easy to fold. Yes, very it's good. Super, super easy to fold. That's once actually you one put thing. All of the manual parts in. I would say for everyone that was introduced, uh, that released for Armored Alliance, I mean, I usually put it through my the five-year-old test, so if my son can, my, my son can open it uh, and close it, he's super happy. And he was actually able to uh, close all of these really easily, and I thought I thought all of them were actually I, I think pretty easy. Maybe Nilius, maybe a little oh. the most complicated one. Nilius is definitely the worst, and I would say after that, maybe... How core, and that's it. Yeah. Trox is easy. Dragon, actually, Dragonoid. Just because of those little. He probably folding. he's probably used to the old Dragonoids. And that's, used to that, but and that's the thing. I would agree because the Dragonoids are so similar that it's not as bad. Um, and then the gear that comes with this one looks like a big old gun. It's like a big old laser blaster, but it's kind of like raised up. I don't know. Yeah. See, I like that one. Um, I think it's. Not I, as good as the Magma Blaster, but I still think that this is pretty cool looking. I like it because it can fit on a lot of our other existing boxes. Yeah. Like, Lupithion can rock any one of these uh, pieces of laser equipment. So the uh, the two big gun uh, laser equipment is uh, Dragonoid and Pegatrix. Lupithion's, the Tertonium Ultras, all of those guys can, can house a new laser cannon and, and, and look good doing it, for sure. That's, yeah, they look incredible. All right, so the next one we're going to talk about is Hydorus, so we all know Hydorus. Uh, and uh, one thing to say, too, is um, all the Bakugan that were released for Armored Alliance is all of the awesome ones and Magnus. So it's all the main yeah. characters from the, from the TV show, which I think was a great first six set. It should have been all of them. Especially since yeah. last wave, you had to wait till three or four waves in <laughs> until you could even get Dragonoid Ultra. Um, from a design, I, I like this. I thought from the first Hydorus we got, which was Core, this looks obviously way cooler. And even Hydorus Ultra didn't look as much animalistic as some of the Bakugan we received. This now, to me... That's a lion. That's a lion. I can see a right? lion. There's no, there's no guessing. I had a lot of people who first got into the game and 
know, with high dwarfs ultra, we're like, is like what is that? And kind of looks like a bear. Kind of seems like a bear. There's no doubt. There, this is That's definitely this is definitely high dwarfs, and I think he looks really cool. Uh, great aesthetics. It opens easy. Um, super easy to put fast. Yeah, and super easy to ball up, which is really good uh, from a from a gear standpoint. So he's got this really cool backpack uh, with the wings. So, oh, yep. So again, just uh, looks really cool. I'm not sure this one's going to be able to work with a, with many other Bakugan. I kind of I'm a fan of the gear, like the big guns, who who could work on other Bakugan, just because I want it to look cool on my shelf. Um, but you know, he makes up for it because he's packing uh, shoulder mounted missiles so I mean if I have a lion in battle with wings and and missiles <laughs> I'm pretty happy all right next year we got how core and how core I, I don't know how to feel about it yeah I'm kind of with you on that I would say that out of everybody who was released um, how core is my least favorite and again compared to the old models right I, I thought the holocore ultra that we have previous was just the head design was way way nicer. See, uh, I don't like. I don't think it was better. I don't think it was better. I don't like, the, I don't like I the chunky was, heads. I think they was, look really small. That's my think, own opinion. I think the heads look tiny. I and I think that the old one looked chunk. But I don't think that it looked good. And I think that this one looks much more accurate. Fair. Okay, I'll give you that. That is what I can say about it. Otherwise, you have tiny heads. You have, tiny you have a head. I mean, huge tail. I mean, I'm just that's a that's a big rear end. I'm just saying. Uh, yeah. I I, I I like the other design. I'll you be honest got, with you. I like the other design, but I get why this design has. You got happen. like Laura Croft the gear on it. feet, you know? Yeah. Like looking real triangle, like. Yeah. So. What about the gear though? I, this is so. This one overall hollow core for me out of all six is probably my least favorite personally. I would agree. I, I, I don't like. I just. Pref I don't like the model compared to the old one. I think the old one looked better. I like. I thought it was more aggressive looking. Yeah. And then the gear here, uh, one again, it could be used with other Baku gun. Um, but it doesn't look. Like a weapon to me, and I know we were trying to. Find, I so just, and I guess so I, here's I guess I'm comparing it to like, you know, the Drago gun. So here's my idea for this, and um, it, it, this stems from the idea with Trox, because Trox's Ventus Cyclonator, the actual part of it shows him basically having two big things on the side of him, sure. while this is something that connects to his tail, right. and that's and we're, the, uh, I mean, we're the toy. The, so the dark I think daggers. I think, because these are supposed to be the mecha claws, I think what this is supposed to be representing is his front paws being huge. Being huge claws. Yeah. Yes. I get that. And so, like, I like that. But you put this onto anything else. It just looks goofy, right? It looks like you slapped a pair of hands onto somebody's back. I mean, give me the, give me the gear, right? Like, so, let's... The Drago's gonna get some some darkest magic here, and I, it's just he got two big hands, yeah, right? And it's not I, even like grabby hands; right. they're like. So I mean, hands off to the engineers because I mean, to, to be able to figure this uh, to figure this all out and make it all work is, is exceptional. But yeah, I just you know I can't have a they all can't be my favorite. And yeah. So for me, Holocar is my lowest. Just I he looks this it's the head only he's because the, we got dopey. a really good, we got a really good model before. He's he. He looks much more dopey comparatively where every other model that we got here looks ten times more menacing. Yes, absolutely. All right, so my next one and last one on the side is going to be Trox. So a couple things right away from uh, Trox. One, again, the previous model, the Trox Ultra was a T-Rex. It, and it looked that one looks super like a T-Rex. Cool, man. It looked it, it looked, looked really like good. Uh, and again, I understand that we're from a design standpoint, we have to try to do something to incorporate the gear. Um, again, his arms are are uh, a manual fold, and his mouth is a manual fold. And I love that. I love the fact that they did incorporate. I do like the, the mouth. I do like the mouth that it opens. Because you can, uh, you know, ooh, that's a T Rex. He still definitely looks like a T Rex. Um, again, all of them are getting the new faction symbols on the body, which I think is is really good. Um, from a model standpoint, I like it. I think it looks cool. I do love that we got a big open mouth. Now, from a menacing, like you said. The, T, the uh, Trox Ultra previous was kind of a cute Trox, 
Yeah. This this guy is my uh, I'm gonna go eat some people trucks. So I'm cool with that. Uh, from a gear standpoint, uh, we do have the cyclinator. Uh, oops. So again, really cool. A lot of moving parts. Um, good spring action creates this really cool effect. And then again, and here's the, the thing with the cyclinator trucks, too. Is it how this one? As a manual part, it does. You can you it, it spring opens to, here, but it's supposed to ride kind of on his hips. Yeah. And then again, any any of my Bakugan who is rocking shoulder missiles as a T Rex because I'm a Dino Riders fan from 1980, that's cool. So I like this. I really like the model. I like the gear aspect. Um, again, I'm cool with trucks. All right, what what do we got? What's our the last one? Our last one here is of course. Magnus is Bakugan Nilius, um, and I really like this Nilius a lot. I know a lot of people were complaining because the necks go down and up instead of up and down. Sure, but it's it's semi similar to the last version we got of, of Nilius Ultra, right? Yeah, like, like you, this, can, you can this, definitely see pieces. This that is they all the same. This is all the same piece. Like, this whole thing is very reminiscent of the old feet folding over, um, but like, basically what they did for this one, comparatively, where they kind of changed drag around just a little bit, Nilly's they changed around a lot of it, where they were like, alright, get rid of his weird chicken hands, <laughs> alright, get rid of those obnoxious feet that were hard to fold in. Make his wings huge. Yeah, he, I mean, he's and the, his, from a menacing standpoint, the wingspan, um, the two heads, the two, that, the like, two individual really heads. Come out. And this time, they really—it's different molds, different eye colors and, on each. Um, if you like the mouth on trucks, I do believe. Oh no, I thought their mouth open. Oh, I might be wrong. Man, I thought they did. They that look, would be crazy. They look cool. What is? And this is the thing that people do get upset about with Nilius, and which is why people are not as huge a fan of it this time around, is the manual heads. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's, that's again, to get to the folding mechanism back into the, into the ball. Now, from a gameplay standpoint, does this complicated design to get folded back frustrate you? So for me, I always, I've always tried to play uh, Nilius Ultra as in the game, and when I had to go fold after like a team attack, it just is always one of those back and gun, and I'm like, ah, it's just the, the frustrating one. Uh, Nilius wasn't. This one's gonna take a little time to master, I think. Nilius wasn't the one that was super hard for me, but there was a high chance of one of those necks being messed up. Yeah. This one, it feels solid, so I don't feel like any of the parts are gonna get super messed up. But that being said, because of all these moving parts with the wings, it, I Less have noticed to break. It, I've noticed it being a lot harder to achieve the full oh, oh the and full like where, okay. where you'll you'll put it together and because the piece is slightly out of place the whole thing will open back up and like you said yeah I breaking is well I mean you get more springs more pieces more connections and um, they're smaller connections so I could see some I could see someone losing a neck or two yeah and All then, right, well, that's our quick recap. Oh, no, wait. Oh, sorry, yeah, yeah, sorry, really sorry. quick. We got the big piece. It's that Scorching Sword. The Scorching Sword. Now, so for me, my first reaction to this gear and Bakugan is, wow, this is a huge display. I mean, this is a huge Bakugan. When you put everything together, this thing is massive, is massive right? So, like, very cool. I, I really like the Scorching Swords on Nilius. I've tried it, looked at it, some other things. Not, it, it really has to go on to this. Are or you like, kind of like me? Like you want, you want the gear to be interchangeable a little Absolutely. more? Absolutely. I, 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 because I, I love the guns. I love the guns, and I would love to have more. Like for instance, like you were saying with the wings, the only Baku gun that I have found from Battle Planet that fits with that gear is sort of Pegatrix Ultra because you can put it onto you, her neck and okay. then you get like a double wing thing going on. Yeah, see I guess I, I just like, I like the idea that um, 
that I can make it interchangeable. And I did find that yeah. the Scorching Swords is as a, a it's a interchangeable design like the like the guns because it has a nice uh, mountable design. Yeah. The problem is they're just so big it, that it when they expand, out, it comes out so full. Yeah, which is real, which it makes sense for Nilius, but yeah, no, it works for everybody else. Mm. Um, and the only, I didn't show these for the, the other people, these little bits for Pegatrix and Halcor, the because they're not, eh, whatever. These things I need to talk about, all right? Because the attachments for Nilius are just, they kind of just look like bigger versions of his hands. Oh, yeah. It kind of no. just looks like he has big hands there. <laughs> and I'm not really sure how to feel about that. Um, I, I like the attachments. Like I said, I'm a big fan of the laser attachments and the rocket attachments and the missiles. Um, I gave, I must have given you all the hands attachments, but uh, yeah, that Nilius's is, hands do look a little. Like the, it's pretty big. It, they look it's like hands. Big. They literally hands. All right, guys. Well, thank you. That that is our initial thoughts on figures and designs. Um, we're gonna catch right back up to you, and we're gonna go through our thoughts on all the new gameplay aspects of. Not only the new character cards, but also the big part of Armor Alliance, the new gear. Alright guys, we're going to come uh, back at you with the competitive side of our new six uh, released uh, Armored Alliance figures here. So we're going to talk about is kind of twofold. One, we're just going to talk about the new character cards that have come out for the six new Bakugan. And then we're going to talk about what's really cool is the Baku gear. All right, so I'll take the first one. Uh, first guy is our Dragonoid Ultra here. We're gonna put up a should be able to put up a card for you. So you can look at the stats. If you have not seen any of the stats, check out uh, various websites like the Bakugan Wiki. They always are really good about getting all the card scans nice and early. So right out of the gate, our first uh, first Bakugan up is Dragonoid Ultra. Red Fist Orange Shield? I know, all the purists, uh, the Dragonoid purists are freaking out because you lost your magic shield. But, how about a 900B, two damage? So first first shock right away is, yes, we did lose our magic shield, and for the tight, the Chaos Titan Milius players, Dragonoid, uh, the new Dragonoid Ultra may not be your solution. But from a Red Fist Magic Shield player like myself, I'm still kind of interested in this guy, and mostly I'm interested because 900B is one of the highest uh, base Bs in the game as it is today. So right away for me, I rank, I rank my Bakugan in three ways. One, I'm going to drop him in a deck today. I'm going to put him on a shelf and wait for his evolution. Or I'm going to put him on the shelf and look good, but he's never going to make a deck for me. So for me, Dragonoid Ultra, he's probably dropping in a deck pretty soon. What's, what's your thoughts on Dragonoid? He definitely, Dragonoid is playable due to the fact that he's got that 900 B power. No other Bakugan in the game gets close to 900 B power, except for maybe Darkest Hydra's Ultra and Arliss Trox Ultra. But they get to 800 B power. Um, There's a lot of 700s. And they. A couple eights, and we got the big boy sitting at nine now. And with uh, Darkest Hydra's, he only had a. Green Fist and a Flaming Fist. Right. Um, so that was even harder to get up. And With this, you've got a 900 B power Bakugan, who you can put in that 400 for Pyrus and Chaos. You can put in the, you, I mean, you can get a 400 B core out of an orange shield. It's, it's not 650 magic shield, I get it. But 400 is still a lot still, there. 400 is still good, and depending on uh, your opponent's deck, you could completely block your opponent out of it using the core. What about the loss in three points of damage? So, uh, Dragonoid has always been really strong. Pyrus is notorious for having high damage ratings versus the B power. This kind of flips the script here. This takes kind of more of an aqua steel where it takes a really high B power, uh, but a little lower damage. So, 902 is a big split. That's 11. That's 11 stat. So if you do, uh, you know, nine and two is 11. Uh, most of the competitive Bakugan sit right about uh, 10, 9, 10. 11 is off the charts. So I think it balances well. Uh, I don't think we're gonna miss it. There's plenty of other new cards that are kind of come out to give us more strike. But I, I think that, I, I like it. I like it. I think that really, especially going into the new set, I think that there's going to be a lot more useful cards that have damage on them throughout the first entirety of um, Battle Brawlers or Battle Planet. Uh, 
There weren't a lot of cards that were really good that had dealt damage, maybe a couple here or there, mostly in Pyrus. But most of the cards, it was not really worth it to add extra damage. But going to Armored Alliance with the battle gear, whole different story. Yeah, I'm not too. I'm I'm okay with his two damage rating because um, we got some. We're pack, packing some Baku gear here that can really help that. Level. And you even look at that, and with his Evo, the two damage isn't gonna matter for too much. Longer. I, All right, what do you got over on your side? I've got Pekatrix Ultra, uh, who is a 500 and one damage or 500 B power and one damage with uh, two orange shields which talk about core difference right yeah. we, we lost the magic shield of drago and notoriously pegatrix has always been a, a green fist background whether whatever color you're running whatever faction you're running it um they've always been core around the green fist deck so to switch it to a double orange shield is a unique uh gameplay change uh, i think it's yeah. very interesting uh what about the 501 stat line so where do you sit on that Pegatrix, as it is right now, as a 5-1, is not really useful. Uh, even with, like the, we were saying with Dragonoid, the plus 400 core, you're still only getting to 900, and man, right, so that's pretty mediocre. First term, I wouldn't say it's bad, First turn play, we, you know, we're looking up upwards of, you know, 12 to 1400 as a competitive player, what you want to achieve your first turn to even have a chance. Uh, against the decks these days. So 500 is a little low, one damage is a little low, but what's the really shining point of why I want to put Pegatrix in? Like, I think you, you know what I'm talking about. Everybody knows what he's talking about, and that is the Pegatrix Ultra evolution that's coming into... What is it, Armored Elite? Armored, Armored Elite. Alliance. I mean, no, I oh, Armored Elite Armored is, the, is, the set is the card set. You're correct, you're correct. Um, in Armored Elite, we've got uh, an Evo that's, I believe, a 4 cost, 1100 B power, and I don't remember the damage. But its effect is, when it opens, it can take all of the cores from your enemy and put it onto itself, which is dirty. so good, <laughs> it hurts, but, um, you know, it's, it's a... It's an elite, yeah. so good luck to everybody trying to find it. But um, so we're so we're gonna we're gonna say that uh, Pegatrix yeah. Ultra in the Armored Alliance version is a is a put it on the shelf until you get the evolution. I, you definitely once you get that evolution, this thing becomes a monster. It becomes absolutely playable for sure. All right, next up on my side is gonna be the Aquas uh, character card of Hydorus Ultra. So. Doris Ultra. Art is looking great. Uh, cores, uh, we have a Red Fist Orange Shield, so um, pretty decent spread. 605, again, um, now I'm at 1100, 11 stat. So again, if you guys were, uh, if you guys did the math before, 10 stat was really what all the sets, uh, all the character cards kind of lived at is the higher upper, upper echelon of Akugan. Now I have two sitting on this side that are at 11 stat. And I think we're changing the curve up a little bit. We're, we're, we're ticking up. So for me, Hydorus Ultra, Red Fist fits right into decks I like to play. Red Fist Magic Shields are my kind of cup of tea. And 605, um, I'm going to go ahead and probably drop this into, um, into some blue. I, I don't have any core synergy, which, you know, I'm always missing. I, I think everyone on your, on your team should have core synergy if possible. It's just so strong. So doesn't have that, but 605 is. I'll take that. It's a doable. Uh, I, it's doable for the for what I get. I think he's definitely usable. I wouldn't say he's super great, and even with his cores, I think his cores are a little bit uh, weird together. Um, do just due to the fact that he doesn't have anything else that's super shining about him. Yeah. Um, so, he's a weird one. I really hope he gets an Evo past Armored Elite, because if not, he's he's basically just going to be an even Steven kind of bot. Yeah, gonna be, there's just going to be better options, what you're saying. Oh, yeah. I mean, even from the past with right. evolutions. And remember when we game. when we're talking competitive uh, gameplay, we're you know we're we're picking three Bakugan out of out of all the released Bakugans with all of the uh, the uh, number numerous uh, evolutions. So when you're doing your deck design, you know you're really trying to find the premium options, and you only have really three to pick. So 
sometimes some mediocre Rakugan are just going to collect dust on my shelf as a competitive player because there's just simply better options and not everything can be the best and it's understandable but but at a 605 um, I'm just okay with that I'll, I'll put them in the deck and do some play testing to see if uh, see if the de the testing can change my opinion he I definitely especially with gear he he can do something he's not useless he's not stuck just uh, better options right all right, what you got? Uh, we're looking at Halcor. Halcor Ultra is going to be packing a Flaming Fist and a Magic Shield, which sounds really good. It's, you know, what a lot of people are playing these days. I mean, Drago, that's that's the go-to uh, Drago combination for, Absolutely. for cores, right? Uh, but then we get the stats with 400 B power and 5 damage. And 5 damage is great on a starting Bakugan. And to have it, I think, you know what? I think there have were four fives back in set one. Yeah, four fives. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, that wasn't that wasn't anything <laughs> special or anything. Right. It's it's just a four hundred five power Rakugan, and it doesn't yeah. have an Evo coming up. It doesn't it doesn't really have anything special about it at all. Right. I'm yeah. So five hundred B or sorry, four hundred B five damage on a on a darkest Bakugan. I mean. Why, why would I not play Hydorus Ultra over this from a competitive standpoint? Yeah. That's at the end of the story. You have to beat that guy as the best uh, darkest Bakugan to take to a competitive tournament, right? And so you, you even got, you know, take I mean, a look at um, Darkest Jordonio. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's a 505. Uh, sorry, 503. And, you know, even though you do have to do the discarding i mean yeah but you have a full set of evos that are available we're not we like you said we're not going to see an evo in the next card set so hollow core ultra for me is is sitting on the shelf for a while from a competitive standpoint um and unless the evo is op he might not come into one of my competitive decks i mean he's going to come into my saturday morning you know donuts and donuts and bakugan deck to goof around but he's definitely not going to come to the monthly tournament with me uh, unfortunately. Yeah. All right, next one over here is the Ventus uh, released Armored Alliance Bakugan. That is Trox Ultra. So Trox Ultra got a uh, pretty good revision to, in this go round. Double Red Fist. So right away, my eyes are lighting up from a Red Fist uh, deck builder. And a 505. So right there, we're at our 10 stat. 505 is, is a great stat line. Double Red Fist and Ventus. So for me, who is a natural uh, red, white, and blue player, or red, uh, white, and gold player? I tend to overlook Ventus a lot, and I'll be honest, I probably it's my least played faction of them all. This may give me some a door into the to the to the Ventus stuff. So double red fist, five hundred five. Um, overall, pretty solid. I'm I'm happy with with Trox Ultra. I think Trox is very respectable. Like you were saying, he's a he's a perfect fit to go right into that power creep boy deck. Um, get that Ventus splash in there if you want it to run any of the the minus. Uh, yeah, nature's power, instead. all the good stuff. Uh, yeah, be able to get rid of those uh, hero cards super quickly. Yeah, I very he's super solid as a choice for anything going in that direction. All right, sorry guys, a little technical difficulty. You know, battery charges is important, yeah. so we got one more figure on this side of the table to talk about. So what do you got over there? Uh, we have Nilius Ultra, and Nilius Ultra is very interesting. He has a orange shield and a green fist, which uh, is pretty standard for yeah. a lot of Bakugan, especially in Battle Brawlers. Um, and he's got a 6-3, which is uh, slightly above curve, I'd say. Like, you see a lot of Bakugan that are like 6-1-ish, so 6-3 is pretty good. Uh, and then immediately go into his core abilities, where it lands on a green fist, he gets the plus 2 damage, and on an orange shield is plus 200 B power. So, so out of the out of the six Bakugan that we have seen released from Armor Alliance, the Nilius Ultra is the only one that has a core response yes. text to it. So it is for me, I mean I I like decks that re, that build around certain core types. I really like that idea. And I like the fact that Nilius has a plus two hundred 
B and a plus two damage option when you're when you're going to roll. So that really gets creative, uh, both as the player because, like you said, you can take the option of rolling to my orange shield to get the B bonus, or I can roll to the green fist to get my damage bonus. My I just had a. Uh a brain blast there because uh, I just realized how amazing it would be if you ran Nilius and then you ran Chaos with that and then you can just go oh I land on my shield I'm gonna play uh, Me Mega Punch Mega Punch for one oh, nice. get yeah. my well, like fist, and then go up to five damage. So would Nilius Ultra be a good contender to drop into a Green Fist deck? Absolutely. I think that Nilius Ultra is a great to fit into a Green Fist, Green Fist deck. He's super great to fit into a Shield deck. And what I think is most important is he is the middle ground. He is the Bakugan that will allow you to play your best sh uh, Shield Bakugan with your best Fist Bakugan. And you get access to all the dark goodies. Yeah. So you, all those things darkness that will let you right back in there and all those things that will let you search for Evos, discard your opponent's hands, tons of stuff. All the evil stuff. So out of the six Bakugan that we've that we've previewed here with the Armored Alliance, what would you call your personal favorite, just from a character card standpoint, what, who is uh, coming to the table the fastest in one of your decks? Um, I would definitely say that Nilius Ultra is going to be the one that is going in there, just because, like I said, being able to have the choice of, do I want to have more B power? Do I need more damage? Uh, you can get both with yeah. the double core. You, this He is very, very versatile in that kind of shield and fist gameplay. Nice, I like that. Uh, for me personally, uh, I usually run a red, white, and blue spread, or a red, white, gold, or red, blue, gold. Um, so the ones that really st has stood out to me is obviously Dragonoid. That base 900 B is, is huge. Uh, he gives me a red fist, so he fits. Yeah, I could swap him out and go dive right into a uh, my red fist deck and be pretty happy with him. But I'll be honest, because I play the Red Fist Power Creep team, the double Red Fist Trox Ultra at 505 stat line it's probably good. is my favorite of the six because I overlook green cards a lot in my gameplay, I'll be honest. Yeah. I think this Trox Ultra version will now maybe open the door to bring some green cards into my Red Fist deck so I can have access to things like Nature's Power and Tiger Reflexes and things that I currently don't. So for me, I'm going to call Trox Ultra my winner and Dragonoid Ultra my second place out of these six. I Just quickly, I think that Trox really, while he isn't a power creep boy, he opens Ventus to that play style, and I think that is really important and really will change up the whole gameplay coming in 2020. I agree. All right, next segment is going to be what we really are all here for. Those the gears. The new stuff, it is the Baku gear, right? So we're talking about the equipment cards that in the gameplay get played onto your character card. So they're a constant uh, uh, constant effect card, so they're kind of like an artifact in, in um, Argent Saga. They're kind of yeah. like a tool card in Pokemon. Uh, your artif artifact of magic. It's an augment oh, in Argent Saga. Oh, augment. Excuse me. I so most... most TCG and competitive TCGs have a card that provides constant effect that we do currently in the game in the way of heroes. And this one's a little unique because it's it's specific unlike, to the box. Unlike the hero, which usually um, takes uh, an effect across the board or all of your Bakugan, yeah, this one to... is assigned to a specific Bakugan. So um, I, I think, think it's I think it's a pretty sweet game mechanic. Um, I know a lot of people are worried about, you know, your, your vital deck space. Is this one card or three cards or six cards, nine cards going to be uh, worth your deck space? And for me, if I'm paying the same amount, uh, let's say if it's a four cost plus, you know, 500 or plus 800, I could play that as an action card. Or if I can get something similar as a gear and it's constant effect and that it's not a one-time use like an action card... I'm totally fine with that. So I'm really, I'm, I'm really excited about the concept of gear cards or the Baku gear, um, and we have now seen six 
with these guys. So let's dive into those six and we'll talk about how we feel about what they are and just how they are going to fit into our personal gameplay from a competitive standpoint. All right, so first off is going to be the Pyrus version. Now, what's really kind of crazy I thought was interesting was the Baku gear card you get is not the actual gear that they're wearing. So, um, and he, Dragonoid, is obviously equipped with a laser uh, of some sort. I believe the actual... Ac I do actually know what it is. It's oh, Magma Blaster. It's the Magma Blaster. The Magma Blaster yeah. is uh, for Dragonoid and... It, like you're saying, it's interesting because I would get up. I would have liked to have paired him up. I I you know, understand. I, I get it. I, we have the yeah. We did get the pyro hammer. Um, so let's just we'll talk about that. Uh, but I I guess if you're getting the magma cannon, would it have been that much to ask us to get the magma cannon card? And in the kit, in, in the package, I guess. And I, I'm seeing a lot of back and forth with it too because you have some people saying, well, it's because these cards are more rare. And you have other people saying, well, that doesn't matter. Rare cards come in other boxes all the time. Right. Um, lots of back and forth stuff with that. I honestly think for me, I don't mind it too much, but uh, I definitely do think that it was important that they put whatever one came with in this set was like the big star one of, of, the, the, cards. of the gear in the I, cards. I got you. And that's fair. I, 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 I think it's all right, and that's why I kind of think it's because they're like the big star ones, you know? Like, oh, you yeah, want the big magma you cannon. Magma yeah. cannon you like. So, I guess, question, do you, do you believe we're going to get more gear cards than we are gear... Toys. Absolutely. Yeah. We are going to get so many okay. Baku gear gotcha. that they will. I like dark daggers. I so we're most so we can. Count I don't know on, if that one. Is. I, I think because I think the other one is um, that comes with Enoch. I believe is the the axes. Uh, gotcha. So I think they're in like the Chaos Bracers. Same. I think. Or here's the other thing I was thinking of too. What they could be. Um, Representations of the pegs. Well, that's what I thought because I think the I think the Heo the Heo bracers are actually I thought they like these were are. those actually. Um, so now, uh, just from a price point question, would you buy a gear pack with just a gear card and gear pack for say three ninety nine? Five dollars. If you no Bakugan, just a, a gear and a card. One gear and one card, I would definitely, if it was the three fifty or like three bucks yeah. around there, yeah. I'd probably do it. I would, I would just definitely do a quip, hold, uh, just do a, just a, just a uh, flex out all your boxes. I think that they would definitely need to do something where they either had a couple of them that were special molds or definitely ones that were special like, in color. Maybe a diamond some sort. gear pack or something like a chase item. Like um. But like, I don't see them releasing anything for three bucks. Yeah, what I do see I, possibly probably not. I was just a I, hope. I would would buy a, like five bucks, or even they could bring it to ten bucks with enough supplementary of like you put in one gear, you got a couple little other things. You could even um, throw in multiple different pegs. I'm just thinking, and like, you can throw in multiple cards. Imagine yeah. like a Baku gear set, like you buy. Well, I'm thinking like a. I, I kind of want like a. I want a little loot crate, like a Fortnite yeah. loot, loot crate that you can buy at Walmart okay. for like four ninety nine. Like a random. And it just has random. Uh, I just want one card and a, and a new piece of gear. But I don't. Okay. Maybe I don't know what I'm buying. Maybe it's blind box. I'd, I'd be okay with that yeah. because I. I they blind boxed a little bit back in the old Bakugan days, so like, I yeah, thought I mean, they, I thought they were going to. I'm totally fine this that this game is time. not blind box. I really prefer. I, I really I like that the, too. the figures are not blind box and that the that the cards are uh, are collectible. Absolutely. Um, I'm 100 percent cool with that setup. I just like maybe just something about the an extra way to get more gear. Yeah. Because I don't because, you know I don't need I don't need five. Dragonoids, but I want five molten cannons, so my whole crew is rocking some cannons. And so that's like Just a you, you you go and look at it, and I think they're literally going to release Dragonoid in every color, wow. so that way you can always get every uh, single color of the mortar. For sure. But like, 
I do understand because it's like, well, what about this Bakugan that isn't going to be having released every single color of it? So. Right. All right, enough of that. Let's get into the to the actual gear. So, like uh, Ivan said, the first card we have is going to be the Pyro Hammer. I'll have that up on screen. So the Pyrus version is Pyro Hammer, six cost, plus one hundred B, plus twelve damage. So it's sticking right to the Pyrus theme of like high damage. However, uh, from a competitive standpoint, it's a six cost. I think. Um, I I personally like my decks. I like to curve my decks out about uh, three to four. Um, I tend to find myself not needing to charge more than four to five energy. Uh, I like to play with a play with cards in my hand, and I just can. Not just energy out. You know, even just keeping it as a six, so that way by the time you get to turn six, you slap down that one card and finish them off. Right. I mean, if I'm pulling this with like a Dan Cuzo or an Air Zero. Like you did. Oh I'm, my I'm gosh. totally fine with this. If I pull it, uh, if I go and if I am running gear, I I'm, I'm honestly probably have to be running the new cores because I want gear cost reduction, right? Absolutely. So if you can take this six cost. Uh, power hammer down to a four cost. Then I'm gonna probably play that all day. I'm okay with that. All right, what do you got on your side? Uh, we're going uh, for chaos with uh, the other big cost for uh, the gears this time around. We have hail bracers. So hail bracers is a six cost with 1,000 B power and zero damage. Um. I, I, I see it, I get what it's doing, but the problem is, is it's a 6 cost for 1,000 B power, so by the time that you get to 6 energy, your opponent's already won. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Like, if my game goes to turn 6, it's 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 taken a long time, right? I mean, it, it's a slow game, and, and now... I think that this I is very to... playable in if you match... Uh, Ventus and Chaos, and you went like Trifecta. Turbo, sure. If you went for the, the new Trifecta effect coming in Armored Elite, I think Chaos Bracers has got, or Hail Bracers, has got a huge place for you. You can play this and you'll have a great time. But if you're not playing any kind of energy ramp, I guess you could even go Pyrus and go for, um, you know, the Song of Fire or uh, what's the, the reroll? Put me on the yeah. spot, man. Yep, Put and me on the super spot. fuel. That one, super fuel. Um, you know, you can go for that kind of thing too. But, yeah. Uh, I mean, as a as a as a standalone card, it's basically it's a six cost one thousand. You got to build around. You got. You have to build around hail bracers. Yeah. You got to build around to have it. It's not. It's not, it's not terrible, uh, but I want stuff with damage too. Personally, I mean, a thousand B. Yeah. It's it's a huge. Uh, step for six costs, but like think about a, an action card, um, you know the Aquas five cost twelve hundred B. No one plays it. It's too expensive. You can get to those numbers without it. That I think that one may be uh, one of the least played out of this set. So yeah. All right, next one we got. Now we're we're coming down a little bit in price. I I love the uh, I love 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 the name of this one. It is the Ventus Baku Mortar. And for me, I just like see like I see Decas getting shot out of a mortar and just like go landing on the opponent or something and like opening up and attacking. I don't know. But now this is our first Baku gear to talk about that actually has um, has text to it. And so for five for five cost, you get plus three hundred B plus six, which is pretty decent. But you get Shadow Strike. So you, so you get access to Shadow Strike, and I haven't, I have, I, it's a plus, I like it, it's good, good with Shadow Strike, but if you are already running Shadow Strike units, this doesn't, this isn't going to be something you're going to look at. Um, here's, but it does give you access to it, I guess. Here's how I see Black and Water, and same thing with our, uh, our next card that we'll take a look at. Um, I like it because it does have that shadow strike. So there's been a concept that if I've wanted to play for a long time, which is going um, Ventus Darkest, and then you Throw just... all the negatives? And yeah, you just lower your opponent's damage so much that they don't do anything to you ever. Yeah, or, or lower everybody's B power except for the Ventus one. So see, you have see, to have shadow for strike. For me, uh, at least currently in our current meta, um, 
I'm not scared of negatives. Yeah. And so Shadow Strike isn't that appealing to me. Like I, you don't I really don't, see any negatives, and the only negatives that you might see is and really someone will either, someone will sneak in like a, a minus four hundred orange shield and whatever. But I, nobody's really running super hardcore negative strategy. Your only right now. negative beat power is from Ventus, and nobody's playing Ventus because there isn't anything. Now that we have Trox here, might open the door. You we're hoping. But. So, so we're talking about five costs for plus three hundred B plus six. Um, it's, I, maybe it's decent. It's decent. Right? I would. I would say it's decent. It's. A, I would say it's. I would call this one average of the six. I would say that it costs like one more than I wanted to. That's fair. Enough. But not like Hales bracers where I'm like I need this to be a lot less for yeah. players. Okay. All right, what you got over there? Um, as promised. We have uh, another Bakugia with Shadow Strike. This is Scorching Swords. Now, in this case, Nilius did come with the Scorching Swords, which I wonder if that's the case. I thought that was. I thought that. I thought that's how it should be. I, I liked that he came with, with gear and with the card that matches the gear. Especially because you, you can look at the card and go, "Okay, I see what they're going for." Right, right, yeah, I was, uh, without looking at the card, I was not sure these were swords, and then I got the card that said, hey, these are swords, and I'm like, oh, sweet, I see it now. So I, I just like the fact that Nilius um, packaged his gear with his gear card. I like that. Yeah, that that's completely fair. Um, but Scorching Swords, I honestly think it's pretty a pretty good contender. It's only a two cost, so super low. So low curve. I like um, that. It's 100 B power and one damage, so. But it's, nah. it, it doesn't have to be a lot, but I mean, but back you in the day. get that Shadow Strike. Right. Shadow Strike for a super low cost. It's always on there. And it gives you a little bit of boost. Little, yeah. A little small boost. I mean, for a two cost to get uh, to get a constant plus 100 plus one, I mean, I'm mean, i okay the, with that. At the very like worst it's an early game early game gear throw it down have it on there till you throw down a big evo or a big gear and go yeah. from there i like that all right now all my aquas fans out there i got got the gear for you right here the baku thrusters right here is the aquas uh, baku gear card uh, it's a four cost plus 300 b plus three damage now for me I think this is right straight middle of the road. Four cost plus three hundred plus three. For me, for me, this is a, this is a pretty solid card for the Aquas guys. Um, I don't see why you want to be able to run these with these again. Now remember, guys, all these are going to be working with uh, cost reduction cores. So if you're running gears, you're going to run cost reduction core, cores. This could be three cost, two cost, and then it becomes incredibly playable. Um, I don't see why you want to drop one of these or two of these in just to have a good time with it. I, I give this one a thumbs up. I like the Baku Thrusters a lot. Baku Thrusters is super good. I honestly, I, you know, I'm an Aquas player, big, big Aquas fan, but Baku Thrusters is super good because it's it's even, so both stats are the same, um, and it's you know, just one cost. It's it's super simple. Um, out of all, even all of the Aquas gears, that's one of my favorites. I'd say probably the third, probably the third best. All right, and last one on your side. Uh, we've got Dark Daggers. Uh, it's four cost for 200 B power and five damage. So, kind of reminds me of Baku a little bit. Yep. Um, and, you know, really looking at it, it, they're very similar. It's one cost less, it's one damage less, and it's 100 B power less. And you don't get Shadow Strike. Right. Right. So, I mean, when you put it that way, actually, I mean, it's kind of bad. <laughs> When you, when you put it that way. Um, well, if you look at it to the other four costs, let's just go by cost, right? So, yeah. so Baku Thrusters is a four cost, no text, same thing, four cost, yep. no text, plus 300, plus three, plus 200, plus five. So, which one are you going to play? I mean, I'm going to play Baku Thrusters because Baku Thrusters is going to give me, first off, obviously, um, and second off, the damage isn't going to be super necessary. A plus three will be perfectly fine. Yeah. And what I like is most uh, most all the gears have taken all of their natural 
faction attributes into play, right? So the Pyrus Hammer is heavy damage, the Chaos is heavy B power, the Ventus gives you Shadow Strike, Darkest gives you Shadow Strike and some damage. So I think they really stuck to the themes of what most of the factions are kind of revolve around as far as base idea and concept. So now it's time to pick one. Uh, come down to uh, what you're gonna pick to put in your deck today. If you have to cho choose from these six, um, don't worry about faction at this moment for your personal deck, but which one would you pick just to drop in? And how many copies are you playing? I think that's a big thing to talk about in the game too, because a lot of people are talking about these. This is taking up slots in your deck space, and if you're a hardcore gamer and you're running the true 40 only, then you know one card slot is a big deal, and you need to justify your personal ratio. So, which one are you picking? How many are you playing? If you were to put it in your deck today, I would say if I were just normal whatever, I guess I would probably, I'd probably honestly go for Baku Thrusters, because Baku Thrusters, it's got both are even, you know, um, you know, Shadow Strike is nice, but usually you're using that scared around the strategy. Yeah, I'm not scared of negatives right now, personally, in the, um, in the meta, so anything that, it's, it, I'm not going to pay to get Shadow Strike, let's say that. Being... The other ones are six and five costs, and the other one, the one that is lower, is so meh. Sure. I think that Baku Thrusters is the winner of all of that come in these sets. Yeah, I'm, I'm good with that. Um, I like to, I, I would say, honestly, I'm the same way. So if I had to choose, um, again, my decks tend to tend to uh, curve out at like at four cost. I don't really like to go higher than that. I can get everything I need to get done uh, super quick, super early, and I curve out about four. So for me, that get, that means anything above four is, is I really have to justify why it would be in my deck. And so Baku Thrusters and Daggers are the two four cost. Scorching Shadow, S Scorching Swords, plus 100 B, plus one. I can get action cards that do better than that. I'm not gonna worry about that. Um, for me, I'd probably go Baku Thrusters, honestly, too. And I'd probably run, I'd probably run, actually, I'd probably run two Baku Thrusters and one Pyro Hammer, because I always like to run one card in my deck, like a Boom plus 20, uh, Blaze plus 10, just because I could possibly Dan Kuzo it or I could Air Zero out, I'm never gonna pay for it. But if I get a Pyro Hammer with Dan Kuzo, why not? I'm totally fine with it. And I, if I have to energize it, I'll energize it. So we'll I go two and two and one. That's my call. The reason I didn't say how many I wanted to play is I don't know. I for Baku thrusters, I would say two. I think that um, larger costs, you're gonna need to go between one or two, and the only ones you're gonna be able to play three of for gears are going to be the ones that give you high B power, low cost, and uh, even then, I think even when you're going super hard, you're gonna go focusing on Baku gears, I think even just seven is fine. Yeah. Seven of them, and if you don't focus on them, two. Two, a couple. Two. I like this. Yeah, so splash that, it in. That way you have them, but it's not like you're going to either be taking out things that you need for them, or you don't have them at all. Yeah. So, I think two. All right, guys, last segment for you. What we're going to do now is talk about some playtesting. So Ivan and I put some decks together. We forced ourselves to use one of the new, one of the six new uh, Armored Alliance Bakugan and to bring Baku gear just to try to get a feel for it. And uh, you can check that gameplay video out in the link down in the comment section. So what we're going to do now is just really talk about what do we bring and why? So for me, um, like I mentioned in the review segments, I really liked the uh, Dragonoid Ultra and I really liked the Trox. So instead of redoing my whole deck, I decided just to literally swap out my Dragonoid Ultra that I normally run, which is the, the 505 Dragonoid Ultra, for the new Dragonoid Ultra. Um, so that's that was an easy swap. I kept my my Red Fist deck. Uh, I, I bring I play the Power Creek Boys. It is what it is. I, they do they do work. Um, and then I threw in a couple pieces of gear, and um, the two gear I had because I play um, Pyre, uh, Chaos and Pyrus, I brought the Heo the Heo Bracers, and then I brought the Pyro Hammer. And you will be able to see in the um, 
gameplay video that, again, I curve out at like four cost, so both of these I couldn't pay for, but uh, Dan Cuzo helped me out and dropped me a Pyro Hammer, and that was pretty sweet. So yeah, that's, that's what I brought to my deck and why, because honestly, it was an easy swap in, and I was really wanted to compare Dragonoid to Dragonoid. Um, and what I thought, honestly, the 900B is solid. I mean, yeah. that's... I, I didn't I didn't really miss the uh, the three extra damage. Um, I did kind of miss the magic shield, I, but it doesn't have that big of an effect because I don't play uh, Hayas, Titan Hayas Nilius. Yeah. Um, but I'm good with it. I like Dragonoid. I like this. I, I, I like the gear. I thought it was fun. I did hold on to the the, the Hayao Bracers in my hand for a little while because I couldn't couldn't play it. But my gifted Dan Kuzo Power Hammer felt pretty good so it was a, it was a fun gameplay i hope you guys check out that video so how about you ivan what did you bring i brought in the nilius ultra into my gameplay um and usually i well I, i'm always playing aquas but i will switch out what i go in between um nilius was super cool like i keep saying over and over again uh, i love how it's got one magic, or rather one regular shield, one fist, and you can, depending on what you land on, get some different outcome. And you can really be able to choose what you want to do for that turn. Um, and I, it, 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 the stats on it are also very respectful. Uh, as well as I played two copies of Baku Thrusters. And while I wasn't able to ever play it, I feel like if I was able to play it, I would have had a lot easier time getting past you. There were a lot of times that I felt like I probably should have played the gear that was in my hands, and it didn't. All right, guys, well, that's a wrap for the Baku vlog. Uh, this is episode one. I uh, hope to see you guys follow along and hit the subscribe button. Make sure you guys like the video, hit the subscribe button, check out our gameplay video uh, with the new Armored Alliance figures and Baku gear down in the link. Uh, once and uh, once we get it up, everything uh, will be ready to go. And a huge shout out to RW Hobbies and Games for hosting our vlog here. Uh, thank you so much. And if you guys are looking for competitive play, we play Tuesday nights here at REW Livonia, Michigan, and we also host a monthly tournament, and we have a big tournament on February 22nd in 2020. Uh, we're doing a battle for the box, so we are giving away a box of Age of Oralist. That's 24 packs to the first place player, and some Armored Alliance figures will be in the prize pool. So if you're anywhere close to Michigan or if you feel like traveling, come up and visit us and we will get you into a Bakugan tournament. So with that, I'm Kevin, Monty Kev on Discord, Facebook, Instagram, whatever. Find me, hang out, shoot me a message if you want. And thank you for tuning in. I am Shrimpo on Twitter, Facebook, well, I guess not Facebook, uh, and Instagram, and many other different social medias. Uh, you can follow me here on YouTube as well, and we will be posting more videos all the time about how you can make your gameplay more fun.